Good evening and welcome to the Anaheim Elementary School District December 15th Annual Organizational Board Meeting. I am AESD Board President Mark Lopez and I call this meeting to order at 5 p.m. This meeting is being conducted in person and by means of live video broadcast on our Anaheim Elementary YouTube channel for members of the public. Para español puede conectarse por teléfono de la siguiente manera. Llame al 260-344-4100. Cuando se le pida, presione el PIN 250-562-523 y el símbolo pound. Any member of the public has an opportunity to address the board in person during the agendized public comment sessions, or they may choose to submit their public comments in writing by 12 p.m. on the day of the board meeting via an electronic form. Comments submitted in writing will be read during the appropriate agendized public comment session. Let's begin with our board roll call. Beginning to my right, board member Dr. Paolo Macalas. Good evening, everyone here. Board member Ryan A. Rellis. Hello. Board member Juan G. Alvarez. Present. Board clerk Jackie Philbeck. Present. And again, I'm board president Mark A. Lopez. Item 1B, our public speakers for closed session agenda items. There are no public speakers for closed session agenda items that were received as of 12 p.m. today. And that takes us to item two, our adjournment to closed session. Is there a motion? So moved, Rallis. Motion. Second, Philbeck. And a second by Clerk Philbeck. Uh, all those in favor, please vote aye. 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 So vote aye, any opposed? Hearing none, we will adjourn to closed session. Good evening and welcome to the Anaheim Elementary School District December 15th Annual organization, Organizational Board Meeting. I am AESD Board President Mark Lopez and I call this meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. This meeting is being conducted in person and by means of live video broadcast on our Anaheim Elementary YouTube channel for members of the public. Spanish interpretation of the board meeting is available to attendees. Para Español puede conectarse por teléfono de la siguiente manera. Llame al 260 344-4120. Cuando se le pida, presione el PIN 250-56-2523 y el símbolo pound. Item 3A, let's begin with the flag salute.
Thank you very much. Item 3B, our introductions and roll call. Uh, to my far right here on the dais, we have Dr. Paolo Magalis, board member. Good evening, everyone. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ryan A. Rellis, board member. Hello. Juan G. Alvarez, board member. Good evening, everybody. Jackie Philbeck, board Good clerk. Evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Board President Mark A. Lopez. To my immediate left, Dr. Christopher Downing, our superintendent. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Mary Grace, our assistant superintendent, educational services. Hello. Dina Melland, our assistant superintendent, human resources. Good evening. Uh, Jesse Chavarria, our assistant superintendent, administrative services. Good evening, everyone. Uh, to my far right, we have Tracy Golden, our senior director of school safety and operations. And next to her is Iris Camacho, our senior administrative assistant. In the back of our boardroom, we have Mary Madrigal and Alina Avila Roque, our interpreters. Janice Cato, our technology support technician. And Brian Brooks, our media services supervisor. Item 3C is our report of closed session actions taken. During closed session, the Board of Education voted unanimously to dismiss classified employee number 12152021 dash zero one takes us to item 3d adoption of the agenda is there a motion so moved realist second alvarez okay there is a motion and a second any discussion all right all in favor please vote aye aye aye, aye. any opposed also vote aye passes five zero item four public speakers this is for speakers on agenda or non-agenda items we do have public speakers this evening. Uh, Maritza Bermudez is here. Uh, yeah. All right. Welcome. Good evening, board president, um, board members, and cabinet. Um, my name is Maritza Bermudez, and I'm a parent at, um, from Horseman, Jefferson, and Olive. And um, usually I come and I speak about different things that are happening. Um, but today I'm here um, in the spirit of the holidays and the great things that have been happening. And I wanted to share something amazing that's been happening in our family with um, one of our one of my children at one of the schools. Um, if you do remember if the last time I spoke a little bit of, by being upset at one of the schools of my one of my children. Um, since then, um, even before then, um, the principal at all of Mr. Heiner, um, you know, had been working closely with us and trying to do his best um, for family engagement and parent engagement. Um, but with this new um, expanded learning opportunities, um, my son is in special ed. So I was kind of iffy, wondering if he could participate, right? Because we tried to put him in Anaheim cheese, but it didn't work. Um, so we were kind of um, skeptical about him being an after school program, but I said, well, you know, I want him to participate like any other student. And um, Mr. Heiner went above and beyond and um, made sure that a supervisor that was gonna be in the after school program be going into Juan's classroom prior to him joining the program after school. So that way no Juan could get to know him, get to know her, I'm sorry. And then also he thought more than I thought because my son is still in diapers. So he had um, an aid that's gonna be available in the after school program to make sure that if Juan does need that, um, that help, that service, he is gonna be able to get it. So um, I wanted to come here publicly and thank Mr. Heiner and the staff at Olive Elementary for going above and beyond for my son to make him feel included, make him feel that he is like regular other student besides his, um, having his special needs. And so that's why I'm here today to celebrate that, that our district is moving in the right direction and doing great things. And sometimes we don't always see it. And I just wanted to share the story with you because it's really been impactful for our family to make sure that our son is felt included and that we are felt included. And I've seen a lot of great um, progress at Olive School and I'm very happy to be sending my son there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bermudez. That takes us to item number five, special order of business, which I've been looking forward to. Item 5A, 
is election of president of the Board of Education for 2022. I will go ahead and entertain any nominations. I would like to nominate uh, or move that we get uh, board member Juan Alvarez to president of the Anaheim Elementary School District Board of Trustees. I'll second. All right, we have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, I will go ahead and take a vote on that. All in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Also vote aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes 5-0 and I will... Oh, we can go ahead and discuss. Sorry. Discussion. Oh, thank you, board clerk. Even in my last meeting as president as correcting me. Go ahead. definitely second uh, that Becky Markey did an amazing job uh, and trust me when I was president last year I had to have a post-it that said the order of a discussion <laughs> <laughs> like so it could get especially during these times right uh, difficult to be on there but she did a great job uh, especially during the term pandemic it was tough so great job I think he's done an okay job and uh, let's go ahead and have Mr. Alvarez now take over and uh, let's pass the gavel and get the show on the road. I'm sorry, the president didn't recognize that last uh, speaker, but in um, any case, that wasn't a, a, an action item, but I appreciate the motion and the second on the great job that I did. So thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, great um, kind of leading the board, presiding the board meeting. So thank you very much for the kind words, appreciate it. Um, and thank you, Dr. Downing and your staff for making it look easy despite my best efforts and, and helping me be successful with that. So thank you very much. And with that, I will enthusiastically pass the gavel over to Trustee President Alvarez. Thank you. Uh, thank you, fellow board members, for your confidence and for uh, this. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so moving along, uh, we're going to move on to the election of the clerk of the Board of Education for 2022. Um, I'd like to go ahead and actually make the motion for this. I'd like to nominate uh, board clerk, clerk Philbeck to clerk again. Second. <clears throat> All right. Um, any discussion? No? Okay, let's, let's go ahead and vote. Uh, let's do a roll call. Hi. Dr. McAllis? Aye. Uh, uh, board member Morales? Aye. Uh, board member uh, Lopez? Aye. And then you'll vote, right? Does she vote? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't remember if you vote for yourself or not. Okay, all right, so motion passed. There's no abstention, so motion passes, so our clerk will, will be uh, board member Philbeck. Again, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, board members and Mr. President. Thank yeah. you. Okay, all right, so we need to move on to the election of representatives and alternates for uh, our different committees. Um, so I think we discussed this already that we, we're just gonna, uh, Go ahead and denote which positions we're all interested in, and at the end we'll we'll uh, vote in for in one motion, right? Okay. So the first position that's up is uh, the nominating committee for the Orange County Committee on School District Organization. 
I'm on that committee, but it, so I have done it, but it doesn't mean I can't show somebody else how to do it if you're interested. It's a pretty simple process. Can you explain a little bit about what that committee does? It's just like once a year, they just send out a slate and basically um, we bring it, you bring it to the board for on, a, on an agenda item and the board kind of decides, you know, who to go for and then the person that is the, um, this person, the nominating committee just casts the ballot, either in person, which is done at that meeting, you know, the, the dinner that we can't always go to because it conflicts a lot with, it did this year, I think it was October 17th or something, it conflicted with our board meetings, so I submitted the ballot um, through just, you know, electronically um, beforehand. So it, either way, you can either do it at the dinner if you, if you go or you can do it electronically. So that's what it is and I'm happy to do it again, but if somebody else wants to do it, I can make sure you know when you're supposed to do it. And when. Sure, is anybody interested? It sounds like our clerk has it pretty yeah. down pat. All right, so. we'll, keep, we'll, we'll put uh, Jackie down then. <laughs> okay. Okay, so next we have the Parks and Recreation Commission ex officio representative. And I believe uh, Board Member Lopez has served on this before. Can you maybe speak to that? I have. Um, well, it's a nice segue to conflicts with our meeting because this very consistently conflicted with our board meetings. Uh, I believe it is the fourth uh, Wednesday of the month. I think I attended one or two of the meetings and you're, there's an ex officio member, uh, city of Anaheim staff gives reports on parks and open space updates, uh, things of that nature, do um, construction at the parks, gets public input, that sort of thing. Anyone interested in taking it on or? Yeah. <coughs> you wanna try that? Yeah. Okay, we'll put Dr. McCallis down. I'd like to do it too. And then we'll put uh, board member Ruelas as the alternate. Thank you. All right, let's move on. I'm sorry, who are the two for that one? I put Dr. McAuliffe as the representative and yourself. It's representatives. Oh, there's two. more than one. Oh, okay. So I'll put the two of you down as representatives. I th didn't see the plural there. Thank you. Well, I, I can stand it as the alternate okay, if, sounds good. <laughs> if and when needed. Thank you. we have a CSBA legislative network and I, I believe uh, I had signed up for this last time I'm not sure if we can verify but I don't, I don't remember ever seeing anything any communication anything sent to me about meetings or connections to this so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this entails has anybody done it in the past I just have kind of connected with I'm a delegate to 315 and, and I've had a lot of legislative meetings with different elected officials and things so it's kind of like a, and I've reported out on those. Okay. It, it, I kind of wondered myself what this actual position was because it really kind of ties in with um, that, well, we have a, you know, I'm the person on this board that does the delegate for CSBA and it's, I'm not really sure what the difference is because it, it, who, who did it last year? I might, be com I, may be c I might be confusing it with the political action group. So I know I okay. signed up for either of those, but I did not get any kind of feedback or any connection to any of those things. So Well, I'll do it. Okay. It says representative, so I guess it's more than one. Then I can also, since I generally gather the information through the other process anyway, okay. when I'm in those meetings. Anybody interested in uh, being the alternate? I'll be an alternate if you're... Uh, Okay. No one's available. <coughs> okay, let's go on to number four, Orange County School Boards Association Political Action Group Effort or PAGE. <coughs> I would like to be a representative for that, if it's okay with the board. I think I'd, I'd actually want to be included in that as well, if that's okay. Anybody interested as an alternate? Uh, again, I can do the alternate. Okay. Awesome, all right. Let's go to local control funding formula, LCSF, LCFF, and local control accountability, accountability plan, the LCAP advisory committee. Well, Mr. President, I know we've, uh, I think we've been on that 
for the past year or two together. Too. So um, I'm, I'm interested in it. If someone else would like to maybe take on that responsibility, I'd defer to them, but I'm, I'd be interested in attending. It's one of the few I can actually attend. So yeah. that's always helpful to be participating. So I would I sign up for that another that. year. I do enjoy going to those meetings. So if you all don't mind, I would like to continue as well. I'd like to be an alternate. Okay. Uh, Ruelis, would you want to be the actual representative and then have me be the, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, six, we have AESD Parent Teacher Association Council representative. I love it, and so I'd like to continue, but I also wanna make, I can still go even if somebody else wants to take the actual um, position, but I definitely will be there in the next one. There's two, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would like to be the second if that's okay. Okay, we'll, we'll pull up McGullis and Dobek. Okay, so uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve all of these, uh, all of these positions. So moved, Relis. Second. Lopez. Okay. Okay, moved by uh, Relis, seconded by Lopez. Any discussion further? Okay, all in favor, all in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. I think that was the easiest, quickest way that we got through that ever of all time. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, so we're going on to item D, approval of the 2022-23 board meeting schedule. That's where we're at, right? I'm a little, I'm a little blinded by the paperwork, sorry. <laughs> no worries, so moved. Relis. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. All right, approval, item E, approval of the CSBA professional government governance standards. It is recommended that the Board of Education adopt resolution number 2021-22 slash 16 in support of the California School Boards Association professional governance standards as presented in Exhibit 5E. So moved, Bill Second, Relis. Okay, uh, any discussion? All right, all in favor of approving? Say aye. 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 Okay, any, uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. All right, moving to item six, news and updates. Uh, do we have any parent leadership group updates? Yes. Oh yeah, I see here. Uh, we have Stoddard PLI parent leader, Maria Lopez, and she's gonna be providing us an update with uh, PLI. Thank you so much. Hello, members of, of the board. My name is Maria Lopez, and I am a first-year PLI parent leader at Stutter. PLI year one parents have been getting online leadership training once a month for the past three months. The next and last training section will be this Thursday at 9 a.m. via Google Meets. These training sections have been very successful, and they are an important part of developing leadership skills that help us parents to obtain tools that support schools and our children to reach their educational goals. After winter break on January 13, we will have a meeting at Key with all PLA leaders and the faces to discuss ongoing parent engagement support for all sites. PLA parent leaders have also helped in facilitating online parent workshops called the 10 Education Commandments, Los Diez Mandamientos. I will be supporting virtually for my site's daughter starting January 19. As a new PLI parent leader, I have also been included to be part of the LCAP committee, which I have joined virtually. I am very thankful for the many opportunities in a AESD for parent leaders and for the support from the schools, families, and community, community engagement department. And I am honored to be here presenting this report to you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful winter break. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, moving on to association updates. There are no association updates. Um, district news and updates. Uh, there are district news and updates tonight by Dr. Uh, Mary Grace, Assistant Superintendent, Educational Services. Thank you. I know I saw that. 
I was like, you're trying to trick me. <laughs> Good evening, new President Alvarez, outgoing pre President Lopez and the rest of the board and this amazing audience that's here tonight to hear about all the amazing things happening in our district. I'm gonna start with some updates from the Orange County United Way. Um, they work very closely with Horace Mann School as well as Revere School. So we'll start with Horace Mann, where back before Thanksgiving, there was a turkey giveaway and Dr. Downing the, and staff from the school participated in, and it was Senator Newman, is that correct? Yes. Um, he also participated in distributing um, Thanksgiving meals to the families. And then a couple things with Revere. Uh, Dr. Downing participated in a walk throughout the neighborhood because the Orange County United Way does participate and provide a lot of philanthropic support to Revere. And they went on a walk through the neighborhood so that they could understand the needs of the school and the students that they serve. And I believe that through that contact, Dr. Downing started to establish um, more relationships around community schooling for um, Anaheim Elementary. Currently at Revere and at MAM, we have a spark point, which is the United Way um, hires staff to work with the families in the community on establishing uh, financial literacy and um, independency. So it's really exciting to continue that. And also at Revere, they um, came out and they generally once a year do a service project in the district. So I'm gonna ask Janice if she could play the video. And it uh, talks about the kindness mural that they painted over at Paul Revere. Hi everyone, I'm Parks, the CEO of Orange County United Way. And I'm here with a weekly update. Well, I'm so excited to be live on site at Paul Revere Elementary, where these amazing volunteers are painting a kindness mural. Paul Revere Elementary is a school that we've been supported through the Women's Philanthropy Fund for the last few years. And they've done amazing, amazing work here in terms of helping with financial security, stability for families, from improving reading scores to helping with physical activity, a food a pantry, and so much more for the families here who really, really need our support. But look at these volunteers, both Women United, Women's Philanthropy Fund, staff of the school, staff of United Way, all came together to make this beautiful, beautiful mural a reality. And this is in front of benches where, or buddy benches, where if a child is lonely, they can sit down and another student will come and sit down and be their friend. So this mural is about kindness, is what we all aspire to be every day. Thank you so much, Orange County, for all the kindness you give us and so many. Now I'm going to turn it to the volunteers. When I say home, you say team. Thank you, volunteers. Thank you for being so kind. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you, Janice. And I want to make a correction at the man. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sue Parks, the CEO of Orange County United. Food distribution. It was Orange County Supervisor Doug Chafee and his chief of staff, Al Jabbar, that helped and supported with that. Hi, everyone. I'm Sue Parks, the CEO of Orange County United Way. And I'm here with. There we go. Um, the next update is um, a, million, a Million Dreams grant project over at Thomas Edison Elementary. And it, there's a local author called Elaine Adams who founded the Rise Up Foundation. And this year they are sponsoring a $5,000 literacy grant to anybody participating in um, a video challenge where students led and made this video that you'll see about um, being enthusiastic about reading and using reading as their superpower. So I'll have Janice go ahead and play that one as well. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me that I call
my superpower because I learned new words. Reading is my superpower because it helped me get through dark times in my life. Reading is my superpower because it makes my imagination go wild. Reading is my superpower because it makes me intelligent. Reading is my superpower because I can read now. So as the credits are rolling, a uh, shout out to Principal Nichols at uh, Thomas Edison, the librarian, Miss Lupe, the music teacher, and Miss Hiramoto's sixth grade students who, um, and the AV club who put the video together. It was student led, student starred, and the music production as well came from the students. So if you see this video out there, give it a like, and that's how the um, Rise Up Foundation will be judging um, the grant. So it's on Edison's Instagram page right now. Also, um, we're excited to announce that um, the, uh, Dr. Eileen Moon, she's a professor at UCLA and she is very well connected with the Foundation for Korean Language and Culture. And a couple weeks ago, they had um, a celebration. They had a celebration because the foundation published and put together a Korean language textbook that's gonna be used, that is currently being used in the LAUSD. It's the first updated uh, version of a Korean language program. And they also held their first inaugural um, Dr. Moon Awards. There was an award for uh, K-8, nine through 12, and higher ed. And we're very excited that Ms. Kim, who is our kindergarten uh, dual language teacher at Jefferson in our Korean program was honored as the first teacher to win that award. Um, it was a <laughs> really nice celebration. The Jefferson team came out to support her. We even played squid games, but they were the actual children's version, so. Turns out that first grade teacher, Miss Amy, is excellent at the squid games, particularly the honeycomb challenge. So that was a fun night and honor for Miss Kim. Also, uh, we've been honoring some art contest winners from Assemblyman Tom Daly's office. Every year in his district, he has this art contest. This year's theme was if I could close my eyes and wake up anywhere in the world, I would wake up in and we had, there were 16 winners altogether in his district, which encompasses both Anaheim and Santa Ana, and we had 15 of those winners, so we were very excited. This kind of talks about the contest, and here are the student winners. Uh, at Orange Grove, we had a second place winner in fourth grade, Juan Rodriguez, and that is his artwork, and he's pictured there with, um, representatives from uh, Assemblyman Daly's office, as well as Dr. Downing and Dr. Marroquin. Um, she is the little principal we have there. And there's the student winning a bike. It was very exciting when we got to roll into the classroom with a bike. Also in the same fourth grade class, um, we had the winner, Amy Duran, and she also uh, received a bike, and there's her artwork, also at Orange Grove. At Orange Grove in fifth grade, a third place winner, um, that's her artwork, and these, the students in third place won a $65 cash prize. And finally, at Orange Grove, they had a sixth grade winner, and this is Ara uh, Galan, and she won a tablet, and her artwork is there as well. And one of the things we learned about her was she's always drawing, she's always creating. So a uh, budding artist over there at Orange Grove, we're very excited. Uh, later that day, we, oh wait, there's one more Orange Grove, I apologize. Second place winner, Alexandra, can't see it. Sesem, and a sixth grader, and she won a bike. Then we moved over to Ponderosa, where we have a fourth grade winner. 
Rio New Song. And as a first place winner, they won a tablet. Also at Ponderosa, we had a second grade winner in fifth grade, Kimberly Munoz, with her bicycle and artwork. And at Edison, there were several winners. The, we had a first place winner in second grade, and that is their artwork pictured as well. A second place winner in second grade, Lizeth Garcia. Her artwork was multidimensional. Also a third place winner in fourth grade, Jeanette Castro. And another first place winner in third grade, Isabella Jimenez. Third grade winner on Tron and their artwork. Fifth grade winner, Armand Shaw. And another third place winner, Francisco Santos. And over at Paul Revere, we had a third place winner in sixth grade, Alejandra Limon. And that is all of our winners. I think they also were recognizing the Edison students today at an assembly. It was also a busy week last year as we um, presented some of our pledge activities with our upper grade students. On Thursday, the first day of our reign, we held a showcase over at Orange Grove and all of the junior highs from throughout the Anaheim Union High School District were there and they were sharing their educational options with our students and families. And um, I appreciated Sycamore band director, the infamous, I can't remember his name now, um, Mr. Gordon, um, well loved, and he had several students performing, and it was fun to see them, and it included some of our former students, so that was kind of nice to see as well. And then on Saturday, over at Savannah High School, the high schools were there and they also were showcasing the um, career technical education um, exclusive pathways that they each have at their high schools. These are some students that went and they were wearing um, their uh, shirts on the back. It said, I am college and career bound in 2028. So as you can see, they had the opportunity to engage in many hands-on activities. I think some of the favorites were um, the uh, ROP were able to have their drone there and they had clearance to take the drone up. So students were able to um, see the drone flying over the campus as well as looking how the feed comes in to um, the monitors. There were 3D pins. Um, Catella has a health career pathway and students were, were uh, had the opportunity to practice CPR and provide health and um, I think it was well received by not only our sixth grade students but our teachers. They were very excited to learn about these pathways and help their students and families make uh, career choices moving forward. And then finally at Orange Grove the students there collected over 800 pounds of pasta and they participated in um, Chef Bruno's Catalina Club. Um, each year they have an annual pa pasta thon and they were able to collect it and bring it over during the K KFI live broadcast on that day. So very excited that our students um, continue to provide service to the community in multiple ways. And that is the news and updates for this board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grace. Okay, moving on to item seven, superintendent's report. First, we have a return to in-person instruction update from Dr. Christopher Downing. 
and Tracy Golden, our Senior Director of School Safety and Operations, and Dr. Yadira Moreno, Director of School, Family, and Community Engagement. Thank you. Good evening, Board President Alvarez and esteemed board members. Uh, this evening, I'm going to turn it over to Tracy Golden and Dr. Yadira Moreno, who are going to provide an update on some of the safety procedures taking place around our district, as well as information on the new Expanded Learning Opportunity Program. Good evening, members of the board. Um, I'm here to give an update on the vaccine clinics that we've been having and the COVID-19 testing numbers. So we were able to have our second uh, clinic at Key, Marshall, and Orange Grove on December 4th, and we were able to vaccinate 355 people. Yesterday at Mann, uh, with the Orange County Healthcare Agency, we vaccinated 108. We have some upcoming uh, vaccination clinics. We have one tomorrow at Family Oasis, and that's again with the um, Orange County Healthcare Agency. And then starting in January, we will have two series um, clinics at Olive, Edison, and Ponderosa. And those will be hosted by the California Department of Public Health as part of their Vaccinate All 58 campaign. And then here are the testing numbers. These are the tests that we were given to both um, staff and students at Key and all of our school sites. So you can see that we're averaging about 500 a week, um, each week. So 566 uh, during the week of November 15th, 461 during the week of November 29th, and for the week of December 6th, 503. Let me try to get this up. Good evening, board. I uh, want to discuss a little bit about what's going on in the school's family and community engagement. Uh, within the last uh, couple weeks, we've, uh, I, we've been able to meet with our educational partners. Uh, we've had a, uh, two meetings with our parent leaders. We were also there to support the uh, agree, meet and greet of Dr. Valdez, the new principal of Ponderosa, uh, last month. Um, even though he will begin in January, we help with the onboarding and communication of that. Uh, we've been meeting with our PTA council, our FACES, Network Anaheim meetings, and various community partners to support our expanded learning program that is growing. And of course, our AESD site coordinators that have taken a huge role in our expanded learning program. So something to share about the expanded learning program is Using the California Department of Ed uh, vision, our goals are to su support our scholars to have safe and supportive, active and engaging learning after school, continue to build their schools, have voice and leadership choices, ensure that they have um, healthy and uh, great behavior supports, diversity, access and equity, quality staff, collaborative partnerships, and like always, we're continuously improving and finding ways to enhance their experience. So our extended learning program is now active at all 23 school sites. Our online academy scholars do have access to their home school. So all our schools have a nine hour school day. Our mor morning program, which we call early, early bird ELO, uh, support is supported through our AESD staff and uh, our outside contracts, Alevo, and then two are coming forth to you today, which is SLED and Hey Tutor. Our after school programs are also um, it have that same uh, support, which is AESD staff or an outside contract. Alevo is currently on site and SLED and Hey Tutor, you will be learning about today and uh, hopefully approving. And then uh, there is additional imp uh, interventions and enrichment opportunities that are unique to every school site. So our AESD employees are um, taking a big role in this as uh, you heard the, uh, earlier today. Uh, so there is unique opportunities at each site based on um, AESD staff. Snack and supper is provided during morning and afternoon programs. And our Anaheim Achieves program is also part of the expanded learning programs and is still active with the YMCA staff. Currently, our expanded learning programs um, is, uh, has 2,054 students enrolled in our Anaheim Achieves program and 3,373 students enrolled in our AESD ELO program. Uh, our morning program is uh, at all 23 sites, and typically that is from 6.30 in the morning to 8.40. 
So again, our schools are opening before school to uh, support the parents with the drop-off process. And the logos on the right-hand side just basically is the staff that is, um, that is serving our, our students. So Anaheim Elementary uh, staff, Alevo, which are currently active, and uh, in January, we're looking to onboard Hey Tutor and SLED, which is students leading in education. In the afternoon, we have those same, pro those same providers, and uh, typically the hours are from 2 to 4.30 in the afternoon for our expanded learning programs. And then we want to share about the redistricting public forums that we have scheduled. Our community meetings will be taking place uh, throughout the month of January. Each school site will be hosting two, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Um, updates and, and a feedback form is also currently available on our website and, and will be there throughout the process. We also will have drop-off boxes for public input for um, anyone who cannot make the meeting. What we are communicating is that if you're not able to attend one of the uh, one of the seven that you visit the website or that you uh, come by and use the drop box uh, for your input. That is the information we have for you tonight. Any questions, board members? I have a question. Um, I noticed that when you were talking about and addressing the different programs and whatnot and the early start time and the late start time, you mentioned the 23 school sites, but we do in fact have 24. What are we doing to basically address the needs of the students that are served in our online academy before or after school? They're having the same opportunity. So the expanded learning pro program is being ran at 23 sites, but all 24 schools have access to it. So the online academy did, all uh, online academy students received communication about this last week. If they are interested in an in-person program at their home school, or if they are in our school based on a transfer, they speak to me directly so I can place them in a program that is closest to their home. So they do have access to the program. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify because it said 23 in. It, 23 in person, but okay. all 24 schools, of all 15,000 students have access to it. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or concerns? Okay, thank you so much for your presentation. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next we have the 2021-22 first interim budget and LCFF budget overview for parents. Jesse Chavadia, Assistant Superintendent of Administrative Services, and Matthew Slusser, Director of Fiscal and Administrative Services. Uh, good evening, Board President Alvarez and, uh, and Board. So first I'll be presenting the first interim and then uh, Matt Slusser will present to you the, the parent component of the presentation. I do want to, um, this evening we're presenting the first interim for your approval. I do want to take this time though to acknowledge the hard work of our business and fiscal department and their respective leaders, Priscilla Martinez and Matt Slusser. And as you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of arduous hard work to capture all expenditures and all revenue, you know, as of October 31st in this report. So I wanted to acknowledge their hard work. So one of the things we always do in our fiscal department, in our business department, we always stick to the fiscal stability board goals that the board has in place. The priority being, you know, the, the district and site budgets meet the needs of students while maintaining fiscal solvency. So this report, as well as every report that we bring to you is with that in mind. So what is the first interim? The first interim, like I mentioned, captures all known revenues and expenditures from July 1st, 2021 until October 31st, 2021. The budget is then updated with more current projections on how the district will operate through the rest of the fiscal year. And then we'll come to you with the second interim report in March with more updated information based on whatever revenues have changed as well as expenditures. So in order to put um, our report together, we have to make assumptions. And these are the assumptions that are part of our first interim report. That ADA funding is at 15,579. There's an asterisk there because uh, I would like to remind the, the board that 
This is the last year that we're being funded as what they call the whole harmless clause. So that's the, the funding that we're receiving. Also that LCFF is fully funded uh, based on the 2000, 2008 levels, right? From before. That the teacher's retirement rate is 16.92% that we have to contribute to as well as the CalPERS at 22.91%. And then lottery funding of $163 per ADA unrestricted and $65 per ADA restricted. So some of the revenue changes, changes since bu budget adoption are the following. And you're gonna see them in the following slide. Under LCFF, we received additional concentra concentration funding for students above that 55% unduplicated count. As well as under the federal revenue, we were allowed to recognize that ELOG grant, right? That was a grant of $13 million. But medical reimbursements now became part of the local revenue. And you'll see that as well. Under state revenue, we received the ELOP grant that uh, Dr. Moreno was talking about, $16 million that we recognized as well as special education dispute resolution grant that we received some monies for that as well. And under local revenue, of course, like I mentioned, the Medi-Cal reimbursement, as well as any United Way grants, as well as first five grants fall under that. So this slide shows you those numbers under LCFF. As you can see, when we came to you in, in June and you approved the, uh, the budget, we expected $193.4 million in revenue on, under LCFF. At first interim, we're recognizing 199.4, which is an increase of $6 million. And basically, like I mentioned, is due to the additional concentration funding. Under the federal revenue, there's a difference there of $33 million. Most people would ask, wow, we got a, lo a lot of money there from the federal government that we didn't expect. We explained back in June that the money we had already, the board had already approved an expenditure plan actually in June. We just couldn't recognize them, the funds. We had to recognize them as we spent them. So this $3 million, $33 million is comprised of the ELOG grant that I mentioned, about $13 million that came in, and then about 20 something million dollars in ESSER funding in terms of expenditures that we could recognize now and receive recognize that revenue. And, and the same thing for the state revenue. Um, I mentioned the ELOP grant that is doing the before and after school programs for us. That was $16 million, as well as the special ed funding that we'd received. So there's a difference there, about $18.7 million. And then local revenue, there's a difference about 1.6. That's the recognition of that Medi-Cal reimbursement that I said that it came to this area here. So overall, we expected in June, you know, to recognize 233.7 million. At first interim, it's 293.4 million, a difference of 59.7 million. But I wanna make it clear, because most people are gonna see that and go, wow, you know, you have $60 million more. No, these funds are already accounted for. The board approved an expenditure plan back in May for the ELOG. You, have plan, you approved the expenditure plan for ESSER 3 as well, and you have approved a couple other expenditure plans as well, which commits the funds for those particular areas. Except we can't recognize the revenue until we actually spend the money. So the graph, this pie chart here, shows you, uh, you know, each of our revenue sources as a percentage of the total revenue. So from LCFF, we get 68%, federal revenue 16.3%, local revenue 1.1%, and state revenue 14.7%. Some of the changes in terms of our expenditures are the following. Under salaries and benefits, we have added both certificated and classified positions that we needed in order to support our students. Under books and supplies, many materials and equipment have been purchased for the extended school day, as, as it was presented a little bit ago. 
and under services and other operating costs, additional licensing and contracts to support extended school day were added as well. Uh, was it, it was explained to in the presentation of the many different uh, service providers that are helping our students before school and after school. And then under capital outlay and other outgoing, we had MNO, uh, some equipment replacement. This is main, mainly due to replacing HVAC systems at the key site for our um, virtual learning academy for our teacher, teachers there. So this uh, table here shows you those numbers I just kind of mentioned. So if you compare the salaries, the biggest increase difference there from the adopted budget to first interim was in our classified salaries. Uh, in terms of supplies, you also see a difference there of $4 million from the adopted budget in services as well of $9 million. Like I previously mentioned, the bulk of that has to do with the before and after school program, ELOP, in terms of providing those services. <clears throat> and then under the capital outlet, you see the difference there of $164,000. Like I mentioned, that's basically, you know, putting in new HVAC uh, units over at the key site on the modular um, rooms. So like always, we always prioritize our employees. So you'll see that under certificated, classified, and benefits, if you add them all up, it's about 82% of the budget go towards our our employees, and about 18% goes through the other other outgoing services and supplies there. So one other thing that we do as part of the first interim is we also have to show the county and others that uh, we can sustain ourselves for the current year and the following two years. So we have to run a multi-year projection, and these are the assumptions that we're making based on the current information that we have at this time. So in 21-22, enrollment of 14,530. Now you're gonna, you usually hear numbers and Dr. Moreno mentioned the 15,000 students that we serve, right? So technically, yes, we have about 15,000 students, but about 400 or so of those students are TK students that we currently don't receive ADA you know, funding for but we believe in helping our families and having given them a leg up, and so we have served some of the costs, right? So technically on paper, we do have almost 15,000 students, but in reality, what we would be funded on would be 14,530 students this year. We received an LCFF COLA, 5.07%. There was no change in the stirs and purse this year. Step and column is costing us $2.4 million this year. In our revenue projection, like it was stated, is 293.4 million. Our assumptions for 22-23 is that we will decline in enrollment about 400 students with a COLA of 2.48% uh, for next year. With the STRS and PERS, uh, the rate goes up quite a bit for both STRS and PERS next year, on average about three to 4%. So we're seeing that if the governor or the state doesn't pick up any of that cost, it's gonna cost us about three and a half million dollars. And then step and column, we're projecting two and a half million dollar cost. So our revenue projection for 22-23 is $244.3 million, right? And then for 23-24, enrollment of 13,700, a projected COLA of 3.11%, a uh, very slight uh, change in the stirs and purse because that's where the percentage actually, you know, it's, it's kind of a lot more stable. So it's about $331,000 cost to us, still two and a half million in terms of step and column, and we're projecting revenue of 222.8 million. I do have to share with the board that there is a lot of talk about uh, surplus budget out there. And in, in, in 2223, they're talking about a potential 5.3 something COLA or up to even 6%. We will know more information as the governor gives this 22-23 uh, budget pr uh, proposal in the coming weeks. And we're hoping that maybe that's the case because that will certainly help us in terms of our finances. So what does this mean in terms of the years? 
So for this year, we're projecting revenue of 293.4 million, expenditures of 279.1, with the difference there, a positive difference of $14.3 million. We have a beginning fund balance of 37 million. We end with the fund balance of $51.4 million. For the 22-23 school year, uh, like was stated, we are estimating revenues of 244.3 million, estimated expenditures of 257.8, a difference, a negative difference there of 13.4 million. With the beginning fund balance of 51.4 million, we end up with the fund balance of 38 million. And for 23-24, we're estimating revenue of 222.8 million, estimated expenditures of 236.5, a negative difference of 13.7. We start with the fund balance of 38 million and we end with the fund balance of 24.2 million. The little asterisk that's there is to signify, to let you know that out of the 24.2 million, I know the board always wants us to have a 6% reserve we can sustain that 6% reserve there, but there is no leftover money in terms of any unrestricted funds at that point. The rest of it is all restricted money there. So other future considerations for us, right? Both positive and negative, right? It's enrollment projection. One of the good things that, although we're declining, one positive thing is I mentioned the 400 uh, TK students that we have, right, that we typically don't get ADA. As you know, we're gonna start rolling out universal TK starting next year, adding two months. So just based on that fact, if we were to analyze that, we would probably pick up about 100 students from there in terms of ADA. So it'll help us offset some of the decline there. Attendance rates are critical, as uh, you know, due to the COVID situation. Normally we run at 96.5%, right? And when we're talking enrollment versus the, the, what we would be funded, since we're no longer on the, under the whole harmless clause, it would affect us because right now our attendance rate are in the low 90s, right? Compared to the 96.5. The good thing is that they are talking at the state level, right? The legislation about doing something to soften that blow for school districts, in particular at, a three year average, right? Um, that's that's the, the more popular one, but they're looking for ways to support the school districts so they don't feel that big impact right away. Of course, like I mentioned, the rising pension obligations, we're hoping that uh, with the surplus money, the state is able to maybe pick up some of that cost, but like I previously mentioned, for next year it would be about $3.5 million. Textbook adoptions, COLA increases, like I mentioned earlier, special education contributions. And then the big word that's going around today is that inflation piece, right? That even though that the state has some surpluses right now, it could be affected based on the economy, you know, if something were to happen and inflation got out of control, right? So our recommendation to the board this evening is that ASD will certify as positive for the first interim for 21-22, meaning that we would be able to meet our obligations this year as well as for the coming two years, okay? Next steps in the budget process. We do have our budget committee and we will meet with them on January 27. We will have by that point as well, more information on the budget proposal from the governor as well, because he does his at early in early January. We will also, um, you know, provide you with an audit report presented early in 2020, the 2021 audit report uh, presented to you in early 2022. And then of course, we'll come to you with uh, an update on us uh, in, in the form of a second interim report in March of 2022. So I'll open it up now for any questions you may have regarding the first interim report. Any questions? Continue. Okay. No questions, just a comment. And once again, I just wanna you know, praise you and your team for making this uh, complicated financial uh, business uh, you know, um, to my level 
which is <laughs> which is pretty low when it comes to finances. So I just want to say thank you all, and uh, we appreciate you. Thank you. So I'm going to have uh, Mr. Slusser now kind of present the parent component of this part. So good evening, uh, Board President Alvarez, members of the board. Um, I'm going to be going over the um, LCFF budget overview for parents update. Uh, before I get started, uh, I just want to thank uh, Priscilla Martinez, Director of Business Services here, my counterpart, for all of her hard work and dedication, as well as our team in fiscal services, contracts, print shop, purchasing, and warehouse for everything they do uh, to keep the, the wheels turning behind the scenes. So. Um, the LCFF budget overview for parents update um, is really just comparing revenue and expenditure changes from adopted budget to first interim. Uh, some of these uh, changes were discussed at the 45 day revise. Um, it is presented in accordance with assembly bill 130, which um, pretty much says that these um, updates need to be presented by February 28th, 2022. And uh, this is an update to the 2021 budget act at adopted budget when um, those items were presented a little little different there's been some changes but um, mr chavaria covered most all of this this is really just a, a big picture overview of, of changes that have occurred so again mr chavaria covered all these items um, i'll just touch base on each difference by each uh, funding source so um, for the total lcff funds a uh, little over six million dollar increase this is uh, due to supplemental and concentration, uh, really the concentration portion increasing from 50 to 65 percent, as well as um, an adjustment to uh, the Education Protection Act. Um, so with the next down, uh, just shy of six million for LCFF supplemental and concentration funds is again just the adjustment to the concentration portion um, due to the larger um, underserved, unduplicated count of students here at AESD. For federal funds, um, this is due to some SACS changes with regards to how we recognize revenue, um, especially ESSER and GEAR. Uh, at adopted budget, these were uh, recognized when they were received. The state changed guidance, and now they're recognized as we spend them. So uh, with that is the, the larger increase um, to the federal funding portion. Uh, with state funds, there was an increase to uh, um, the program Dr. Moreno is um, you know, spearheading and rolling out all the good stuff with that, um, with the ELOP grant, as well as uh, special education dispute resolution grants. And then uh, for the local funding, um, that was uh, 1.6 million increase um, due to uh, Medi-Cal, again, a SACS change to how we recognize the revenue, um, as well as uh, local grants, such as like the first five grant that has also increased. Uh, the overall net effect of this is uh, just shy of a $60 million increase for all uh, revenue sources to AESD. Moving on to the uh, expenditure changes, um, Mr. Chavaria covered you know, in pretty good detail as far as, as the difference. Uh, it's just shy of $16 million. Uh, again, a lot of that is due to the ELOP grant uh, with regards to services and supplies. Um, and all those the extra um, extra items offered to our students for the extended school day. And with that, uh, just a, a real quick overview of everything. Do you have any questions or any any items I can clarify or help answer? All right. I think we're good. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, item 7C, it is uh, recommended that the Board of Education approve the 2021-22 first interim budget and LCFF budget overview for parents as presented in the December 15th, 2021 board meeting. This report indicates a positive certification indicating the district will meet its financial obligations for the current year and two subsequent years. So moved, Rellis. Second, McAllis. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, no. Motion passes. Okay, so 
And just so the, everyone knows that these presentations will be posted on the district website. Anything that we got uh, shown to us on the screens will be available to the public on the uh, Board of Education page as of tomorrow. Okay, item eight, the consent calendar. Items listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and are acted on by the board in one motion. There is no discussion on these items unless a member of the board, staff, or the public requests specific items to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar. Is anyone that wants to pull anything from the consent calendar? Board Member Fildek? I will pull item, on, it's on page eight, item B2. Okay, we have item B2. It's item 8B2. Page 8. Right. And it's Educational Services oh. B2. So for clarification, 8B2. Okay, so just to clarify, uh, you want to pull item 8B2. Let me just find it on my other uh, agenda. That's what I'm trying to, to do. Give me a second. Okay, so then uh, I'm forgetting the procedure. Do we go through and uh, since she pulled that, we go through and see if there's a motion to discuss and go from there, right? Okay, is there a motion to discuss item 8B2? Is that how it goes? Don't we approve? Or do I approve the consent calendar yeah. first? Okay, is there a motion to uh, approve the remaining consent calendar? So, so moved. Oh. I'll take a second. Okay, motion by Magalis, seconded by Philbeck. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, aye. motion carries. Okay, so let's take a look at item um, 8B2. Uh, is there a motion to discuss? So moved. Okay, moved by Rallis. Second. Second by McCullis. Uh The discussion is just that I am a commissioner for first five, so I will abstain on this item. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, all in favor of approving item 8B2, say aye. 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 Okay, uh, motion passes. All right, thank you so much. All right, that moves on to the action calendar. Okay, so action calendar, superintendent's office. It is recommended the Board of Education adopt resolution number 2021-22 slash 17, declaring January 30th, 2021 as Fred T. Korematsu Day of Civil Liberties and the Constitution throughout the Anaheim Elementary School District. We have a motion. So moved. Moved by Board Member Lopez. Second. Second, Ruales. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of uh, passing, say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Educational services, there are none. SELPA, there is none. On to human resources. It is recommended the Board of Education approve the I'm, 20. I'm sorry, Was it, is, is, am I looking at the wrong agenda or something? Oh, uh, that's just, I don't know if I'm seeing that. There should be an educational services B1. B1. Thank you. Let me look back at this other one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Educational services. It is recommended the Board of Education adopt the Educator Effectiveness Grant Plan as presented in Exhibit 9B.1 and shared at the November 17th, 2021 board meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved, Rellis. Moved by Rellis. Second, Philbeck. Second, Philbeck. Okay, any discussion? No, all in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Motion carries, okay, thank you. All right, now let's move on to the action calendar, superintendent's office. Now I'm in the right spot, right? Human resources. Uh, now I'm looking at this. <laughs> it's my test. Can I do this? I can do this. <laughs> We're all watching you. All right. Okay. So <laughs> SELPA none. Human resources. Uh, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the 2022-23 and 2023-24 school calendars as presented in Exhibit 9D.1. The calendar was presented for first reading. Uh, review at the November 17th, 2021 board meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Rellis. Second, Phil. Second, Phil Beck. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes 5-0. Oh. 
Okay, administrative services, there are none. Okay, on to item 10, a board discussion, a board member activities related to school business. Dr. McAuliffe. All right, hey everybody. Uh, like the, the board members and the cabinet, uh, uh, I did attend the California School Boards Association uh, in-person conference. It was actually weird, you know, being in person at a conference and it was nice. Uh, so I'm very appreciative that I got an opportunity to continue to learn um, what other districts are doing and, and and like I said, you know, I really love the, the, the great things that we're doing at Anaheim Ele Elementary School District. It's really a good way to compare other districts. Uh, best, sharing best practices, right? It's always great to learn. So it was a great event and I really enjoyed the time with all my board members in the cabinet as well. I did a few uh, school visits. I did visit uh, two sites in my uh, trustee area, Kara Barton and uh, Stoddard. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to Mr. Turney and, and really the city of Anaheim. I'm re really grateful for uh, you know, in my neighborhood, uh, Barton Park. Uh, I frequent Barton Park, and uh, I was, I did see Mr. Turney, he was doing a uh, uh, physical education uh, test. I think every quarter he checks the students' miles, and it was great to have a conversation with him. And uh, I love, you know, always running into like, you know, former, because uh, I used to teach at La Huera, and uh, I do remember and miss a lot of the students and parents and families, and. I did run into a parent of mine uh, who actually works for our district, uh, uh, Mrs. Luna. I also want to give a shout out to all the, the aides who work out um, during recess and during, uh, you know, it was amazing, uh, Stoddard, you know, they were all spread out, you know, watching the kids and, and oftentimes I never share how grateful I am to all staff, especially even our, our recess aides. So I just want to give a shout out to Mrs. Luna. And that's all. Oh, and uh, happy belated birthday to Trustee Ruelas. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McAuliffe. Uh, board member uh, Reles. Thank you, President Alvarez. Um, so yes, like uh, Dr. McAuliffe said, uh, we were all at the CSBA conference in San Diego and it was fun, it was great. Um, the speakers were awesome, most of them. Uh, I loved Victor Rios. He was really high energy, uh, really inspirational, got me pumped up. Um, and like any conference, um, you know, there were workshops that were amazing and there were workshops where I was like, what the heck is this? Um, but uh, try to take a, a positive thing from every workshop I attended and uh, it proved to definitely be a beneficial um, conference. Um, it's great catching up with everybody. It's great running into other board members uh, from other districts and catching up on the cheese, I mean, finding out what they're doing. Um, but it just makes me all proud of all the great things that we're doing here in the amazing Anaheim Elementary School District. Um, on December 9th, I attended the Junior High Showcase over at Orange Grove, and I would just like to give a shout out to Dr. Marroquin. Um, she did a fantastic job. She was very hospitable with all of us. Um, AESD represented. Uh, we had to definitely pivot last minute with all the rain coming down, um, and uh, it ended up being a huge success. And I was very leery about whether or not what the turnout was going to be. Um, but it was awesome. We had a packed house and it was great to see um, a lot of the future Anaheim Union students um, there, uh, you know, seeing what our junior highs are all about and as well as having Hobbs barbecue there serving delicious uh, barbecue. And just a shout out to Hobbs. Uh, they are basically a fantastic locally owned uh, restaurant whose uh, parents are products of AUHSD and AESD, and they have a ch children in Ponderosa, right? Ponderosa. Um, and then December 11th, I also attended the um, sixth graders over at the uh, CTE Exclusive Pathways event. Um, I think that that was a great event, and it was a promising first year. Um, I think that um, AUHSD definitely has a lot, 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 lot to learn from our teachers in AESD, uh, mainly about how to engage our students. Um, they're there for a three-hour period. Um, there's 10 schools that have pathways. Um, you do the math and that's done within 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> so what to do then? Um, so uh, I have definitely put that in the suggestion box of AUHSD uh, to team up with our teachers and really 
um, rethink how we do that for next year. But special shout out to uh, Assistant Principal Jenny Frankie from Franklin, who really in a lot of ways uh, took on some leadership roles that day um, and really helped, um, helped the people in AUHSD kind of figure out a way to really get things going and keep the kids engaged and really um, when to pack up, et cetera. And with that said, I would also like to give a shout out to an individual named Isis Vargas, who is a sixth grader at Ponder, or I'm sorry, at Price. He is a Price Panda. And the reason why I'm giving him out is because uh, giving him a shout out is because this is a clear testimony of the type of students that we have um, here in the amazing Anaheim Elementary School District. Um, Isis came up to me uh, and Miss Frankie when we were there uh, on that Saturday, and he had five dollars in one dollar bills. And for a sixth grader, I mean, I'm 41 and I'm like five dollars. Uh, but for a sixth grader, uh, you know, uh, for him to just come up and just let us know that hey, somebody somebody dropped this, uh, et cetera. And his friends were like, I told him to keep it, you know, and all this stuff. But this kid was just such a nice boy, a uh, nice young man. And he was like, no, I just want to turn this in, et cetera. Um, so kudos to this young man and kudos to uh, Alex Ramirez uh, for having such a fantastic panda at his school. And um, with that said, that concludes my report. And once again, congratulations, President Alvarez and Clerk Philbeck uh, for your positions for this year. Thank you, Board Member Rolis. Board Member Lopez. All right. Thank you very much, President Alvarez. Uh, back on November 30th, it seems like a long time ago, um, I attended the Paul Revere School Site Council, uh, which is virtual. Um, I don't get a chance to attend a lot of the meetings during the day, so... This was immediately uh, after school. Uh, so I just wanted to thank the staff there for allowing me to attend and be a fly on the wall for that meeting. Uh, and then as my a couple of my colleagues have already mentioned, I'm sure my other colleagues will mention, I was at the CSBA conference as well, attended a few uh, good workshops, panels. Um, I know our very own President Alvarez was there um, uh, presenting at one of the workshops as well. Unfortunately, I was, I was unable to attend, but I, Appreciate that we were there to represent. Uh, I know some of our staff was also there as well. Um, so I wanted to thank you for that. Um, but uh, I did attend one panel with uh, Mr. Chavarria uh, and kind of looking to the future of what our district will look like, uh, keeping in mind all of the declining enrollment and challenges that are facing us in the future and uh, how we adapt to that. So I was glad to join Mr. Chavarria for that. Uh, and then uh, I did attend the LCAP meeting here with you as well, President Alvarez, uh, one week ago today. So uh, a, good, a good turnout. I know we had, we're, we're, it's challenging with the virtual hybrid uh, model that we have, but uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, a lot of folks are able to have that access and that choice uh, to be able to tune in or join us in person. So uh, it was a good turnout. As always, uh, we kept it very efficient. So I appreciate that, Dr. Downing. Um, and looking forward to the next one next year. So thank you. With that, I will conclude my report. Thank you, Board Member Lopez. Uh, Clerk Philbeck. I also attended the CSBA conference. I was there a few days before everyone as a delegate for, um, we had a lot of uh, sessions for bylaws and electing some directors and such. So it was, it, they were long days, but it was very interesting. And, uh, and the conference itself, as Mr. Rella said, yeah, there were, you know, I, I got into some um, breakout sessions and kind of, it was, in a way it was cool because it, some of them were on parent engagement and things and I thought, you know what, we're already, we're already doing this and, uh, and so it was kind of a proud moment so I did kind of shift around a little bit but overall the information was very good. Um, and it was well worth us being there. I appreciate our district supporting us, being able to do these conferences, because uh, believe me, there is a lot of information that comes to us. Uh, some of the ones that I found particularly uh, interesting were uh, the current legal issues facing governing boards and guidance for board members, also California fiscal and economic outlook implications 
for K through 12 schools and mental health and wellness for students and families. Those were some really, really good ones. And also, uh, I would like to compliment um, President, our new President Alvarez, on the workshop that you helped uh, facilitate and were a presenter on the, it's a, it was dual language. What was it actually, the title of the program? It was really long. I don't even know the title. <laughs> it was on dual language and yeah. in conjunction with AUHSD and uh, Mr. Jabbar and Magali was there. And so we, uh, a lot of us were in that session and I was really proud that we were there presenting. Um, it was, it was excellent. So, and, but before I actually drove down there, mm -hmm. I did attend the PTA meeting. Finally, in person, we were in person and um, to be in the room again, with everyone uh, was so special because you can just, it's a dynamic that you just have to be there to kind of feel. And um, the wheels are turning and the work is being done. And it was just really uh, gratifying to be able to be back in the same place with everyone and, you know, be together. Uh, let's see. I will mention, um, if you're interested, I'm on the committee for a school district organization. That's the committee that oversees trustee area maps and the Orange County Board of Ed is in the process of redefining theirs. If you're interested, go to the website. I believe that they have selected map five. And if you're interested, you can um, check it out and see what you think, make comments. Um, there's gonna be another meeting in January, but there's also there was two or three maps mentioned that were really good. So you have that information, just go to the Orange County Board of Education website. I also attended a uh, community resident leadership academy meeting and our own Wendy Dallin, Linda Duran and Yadira Moreno were also present. There were a lot of uh, partners, outside partners and community partners that were on this call. It was really interesting. It's um, all about community engagement. We have some of the same challenges. We have some of the same successes. And there just was a lot of really interesting information that came through this call. So I know we're gonna have a few more meetings. Um, I just, uh, and then I, as you can see the picture, I did stop by Westmont for the jingle jog. And picture uh, the majority of the kids out on the, the big field and crazy loud music and they're running and you know it is so fun and uh, they're in their little uh, outfits and things but then for the ones that needed a little bit more calmer area uh, or needed to go a little slower there was another little area here and I want you to see this little cutie her uh, that is um, Evelyn Gonzalez and she is pre-k a pre-k student and that's her teacher Mrs. Tiffany Favilla and Evelyn was totally decked out all the way from head to toe, as you can see, and her wheelchair and everything, and she just was absolutely adorable. So I had to uh, snap a picture and thank you to her parents for allowing uh, me to show that tonight. And other than that, I just wanna give a shout out to Price for the exceptional newsletter um, or a weekly communication they've been putting out. If you haven't seen it, take a look at it. It is really, really good. It's like professional good. So shout out to them. And other than that, I just want to uh, wish you all a very happy and safe winter break, however you celebrate. I just wish you um, peace and goodwill. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody back here in January. And thank you very much and congratulations, Mr. Alvarez. Thank you, Clark Felbeck. Appreciate and I wanted it. to tell the story, the badge story <laughs> about Ryan at the conference, but I won't. But if you want to hear the badge story, the red badge story, ask me and I'll tell you. You know the red badge? Oh, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I could tell you. So anyways, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so I as well attended the CSBA uh, conference along with everybody else, December 2nd through the 4th. And I just found it in my email. The presentation was called Implementing Global California 2030, a profile of two districts and their journey to develop multiple pathways to bioliteracy. <laughs> uh, so what, what we did is we partnered with Anaheim Union um, uh, and their dual language programs. And uh, 
we had Magali Rodriguez and Renee Bryant and Dr. Um, and board member um, Al Jabbar, and we all uh, we all teamed together with uh, Californians together uh, to present on our journey as two districts who uh, who develop dual language programs and our journey in kind of working together and getting our students prepared to be plurilingual citizens. So it was a great experience. I had a, uh, a lot of fun uh, kind of working on it. I, I didn't do much of the work. Magali did most of the presentation, to be honest, but um, I just want to thank everyone who was behind putting, uh, putting the presentation together and getting that information out so we can profile our district because we are we are li we're literally on the forefront of dual language education in California and I, I believe in the United States. And it's always a, a great time to be able to represent uh, our district and share our stories and get other districts to also get kind of pumped to develop their, their bilingual programs as well. So I had a great experience and I, I'm thankful that I was able to pres help present uh, there. Uh, that same weekend on December 4th, my son Reese was able to get his second uh, vaccine at uh, the clinic at Key Elementary. So I also just wanna, on behalf of the families who took advantage of that and were able to get there, I wanna thank everybody for making that happen uh, from the bottom of my heart, really. Uh, you don't know how much of a heavy burden was lifted on our family once we knew our, our youngest child was vaccinated and uh, kind of ready to go. All right, so we got one more week and he's considered fully vaccinated and I couldn't be more, more happy than that, uh, that to know that that's going on. And, if I'm feeling that, there's other families feeling that, and it really is appreciated. And I, sincerely, uh, I'm so grateful for all the work we're doing uh, uh, surrounding the partnerships that we have with uh, getting the vaccine out, right? So thank you about, uh, for that, everybody. And then, um, let's see. Oh, I also attended the LCAP meeting on December 8th with uh, uh, board member Lopez. Uh, this time I attended virtually because we had some child care issues we had to take care of. So I was able to plug in um, from home, which is actually the, the point of why it's awesome that we're offering it, right? Because uh, anyone had access to that meeting from either in person or in a virtual format if they needed to connect in, in that way. And so I got to see it play out in, from the virtual side. And so uh, kudos to everybody who gets that done because there's a lot of technology involved. I could tell there's microphones connected, there's video cameras set up at certain angles, there's certain staff turning mics in, off and on so that the People at home don't get the feedback from the, the, the session here, and then people in the virtual setting are able to interact with one another as well. So everything, everything works out really well, and, and it, um, there's, there's a lot of work involved in making that happen, but it's necessary because I think the more access we have to our meetings, uh, the, the better it is for everyone to, to connect and make sure that the meetings continue to be facilitated in the way they have been because uh, we, truly, we truly work really well with our, our community partners, right? That's what we're saying now instead of stakeholders. <laughs> so uh, that, uh, I'm really, I'm always really just uh, really happy with how the LCAP gets rolled out. And, and I just wanted to acknowledge uh, former President Lopez for his work this past year. I know you, you kind of were shoved into the position in a really difficult time. And I just wanted to know that I do, I do appreciate you taking that on and doing it with class and moving forward and making sure that everything got taken care of. So thank you so much for, for taking that on. So I want to uh, publicly thank you for all your service this past year. I really do appreciate it. And then um, we would be remiss without singing happy birthday to board member Rollis. <laughs> so we can sing. Board member Rollis had a birthday between this last meeting and this one, right? So let's go ahead and uh, do that on three. <laughs> I'm sure he's not minding us singing him, him happy birthday. <laughs> I'm not because of the fact that I'm justifying it that I'm turning 21. Oh, okay. Plus 20. <laughs> so 41. So. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, board member Rallis. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Okay, and that concludes my report. Let's move on to item 11, future agenda items. Any agenda items? All right, I do have one request. Um, can we get an update with regard to the critical ethnic studies, oh no, a culturally responsive ethnic studies task force? I know that we're currently in our second year. Uh, I just wanna see an update on that. Thank you. Uh, Bruno Rose, Lopez, Robert. Okay. Is it possible at some time in the new year, because no, time press here 
could we get some information or maybe a report on the St. Jude Neighborhood Health Center over at Ponderosa? I drove by that and it just looks beautiful. Now that's operating, right? But yeah, it's just kind of starting. So if we could maybe just get a little information on that and then possibly, I know I would like to um, take a tour sometime next year and maybe everybody might like to. So um, like I said, no, no time pressing because I know when we come back we'll have a lot of items, but just sometime maybe even towards the, the spring or whenever you guys can. Can I ask a point of clarification, though? Is that on Ponderosa, or is that the community center? It's across the... Yeah. But it's right there. Okay, so are we allowed to give tours of that center? I mean... Okay. And, and also, one of our board members from the YMCA is heavily involved with that, so I know we could, I know we could do a, a tour of it um, or, you know, get some more information. But, yeah, it's kind of like... It's like right across the parking lot there. And it's really a nice, nice building, a beautiful addition to the neighborhood. So I would just kind of like to know a little bit. I've been hearing about it for a couple of years through the YMCA, but now that it's actually there, I'd kind of like to know um, a little bit about it. Well, I'm, a I'm, I'm a little confused. Is it a new one or is it the one from two years ago? Is that well, there was a whole ribbon cutting with the previous mayor? It was right next adjacent to Ponderosa. Is this a new building or is this, did they take it over? It's a new construction. It's a new building. It's something that's been in the works for like five years. Yeah. Ah, okay. It, it, it's gone through various um, versions and it finally came to be. So. Uh, it, Wendy Dowling in our network Anaheim is very involved with that so we'll have her do a write-up for the board in a future board memo and then see what we can do about scheduling time for you to see it yeah it's not the community center is still there this is this is a new building that's just like right across the parking lot so when you drive down the street look at it it's 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 really nice and it's supposed to be a great service for the neighborhood so um, just like to hear a little bit more about it. Thank, thank you. Any other future agenda items? I'm good. Okay. With that being said, let's go ahead and adjourn this meeting at 8:04. Here we go. And thank happy you. Happy birthday, Ryan. <laughs>